John M. Barry's non-fiction book Rising Tide, The Great Mississippi Flood of 1927, and How It Changed America, examines one of the greatest natural disasters in American history and the way it reshaped American politics, culture, migration, and race relations. In 1927, a great flood swept through Mississippi and Louisiana, covering an area roughly the size of New England and killing thousands of people. Through a number of lenses, with a focus on the failures of egotistical engineers, Barry examines how the flood changed America. Barry begins with a history of the river's development, portraying some of the key individuals who played a pivotal role in the industrial changes to the Mississippi River Valley. Barry delineates the Mississippi's historic patterns because it ends in a delta, the river frequently flooded, leaving rich deposits of soil in the surrounding area, but causing damage to any crops growing during the flood periods. After the Civil War, rich farmers demanded that technology play a role in these flood patterns to help them maintain their profits year after year, without fear of bankruptcy during flood years. Many of these farmers held deep political sway as the aristocratic landowners of the South. Barry elaborates on these issues as he describes the events that followed. One engineer, James Buchanan Eads, was so confident about the engineering feats of the period, he claimed that even the Great Mississippi could be harnessed using levees and other man-made structures. His statement in 1874 eventually led to projects in the region, by the 1920s, huge stretches of the river had barricades and levees that were 30 feet high and as wide as 188 feet. After building these levees, engineers claimed that they had fulfilled Eads' prophecy. The Mississippi had been tamed. Barry depicts the hubris of these men with irony. Soon after the completion of the levees, a flood greater than any the region had ever seen swept through, and those living in Alabama and Louisiana experienced disaster unlike any before or since. Certain that they were safe from floods with these new technological installations, few people evacuated during the flood warnings in 1927. As a result, when floodwaters came cascading over the barricades and swept away homes, farms, and other infrastructures, hundreds of people were caught in the waves and drowned. Poor African-American sharecroppers were among those most affected by the floods the Red Cross fed nearly 700,000 people each day in refugee camps, more than a quarter million blacks were displaced from their homes for several months following the flooding. As a result of this flooding and the fear many had of returning to their homes after the incident, a huge wave of black sharecroppers, who had formerly kept the aristocratic white planter class alive in the South, left for the North. Nearly all of those affected by the floods departed for other regions of the country, hoping for new opportunities and stability. They left the South without a labor force and with millions of dollars in damages to property and infrastructure. The New Deal arrived soon after, fundamentally altering American politics and culture. Barry makes it clear that without a class of working-class black laborers, white southern farmers and politicians lacked the resources to maintain the agriculture in the region. The region struggled to recover and still struggles to this day. Barry draws connections between this event and a number of significant changes in the way infrastructure is developed in the United States, black migration, politics, and much more. Though the Great Mississippi Flood is rarely discussed in history textbooks, Barry makes it clear that it was a foundational moment in contemporary American history. John M. Barry is an author, a historian, and a distinguished professor of history at Tulane University in Louisiana. He has written books on the Great Mississippi Flood of 1927, the influenza of 1918, and a number of other foundational events in American history, with a particular focus on the separation of church and state, among other issues. Barry's work has often led him to speak to policymakers, engaging in policy making, he sits on the Southeast Louisiana Flood Protection Authority, among other committees, after his research on the Great Mississippi Flood for his book Rising Tide. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.